guys. It's uh, Monday evening. It's uh, about a quarter to six. The deer haven't been coming out. It's about seven every night, but uh, the wind has just been howling all day. Uh, 40, 50 mile an hour gusts. The temperature has cooled off, so if the wind were to die down, I think we'd see a lot of deer movement tonight. But uh, I think we still got a little bit of time, especially with this with this wind blowing. So I grab a trail camera. I am going to sneak in to where that bachelor group was living. Um, I think maybe they're still there somewhere. Uh, they're just hunkered down uh, from the pressure. So I'm gonna see if I can get some pictures of them moving at night. Um, and if they are still there, uh, it'll give me more uh, confidence in, in sticking around here hunting them. So. That's where I'm headed right now. Uh, so I'm gonna sneak in here. It's, uh, it's not too far off the road, actually, uh, where I'm gonna put the camera. It's kind of a big, uh, a big open little meadow. All right. So that was quick. Hopefully. Uh, Get some pictures of them. Uh, if not, hopefully we find them glass. One way or another, we're gonna try and locate them. There's nothing. So we just went on our, so I just went on my first stock. Uh, we came to a new spot this morning, and glassed. Uh, actually, we set up, set up on top of that ridge and glassed where I'm at now and found, I don't know, a dozen, 15 does, some four corns, some spikes. So no shooters, but uh, we're also here to test out the new mule deer fan, the decoy. So I had clear over here and uh, Zach stayed on the other ridge to, to film. Got clear over here, got to where the, they were in the ditch and uh, actually just over this rise. Snuck over the top with the fan and they weren't there. So I tech Zach and he just let me know that right before I got here, they got up and walked over the other side. So they should just be on the other side, but uh, wait for Zach to get over here and we'll regroup and make a new game plan. When I was coming up here though, I set my pack down to get ready and found a pretty good shed. <clears throat> it's an oldie, but it would have been a goodie. It wasn't all chewed up and nasty. Oh, so there's, there's bucks in here somewhere. Just gotta find them, so we're gonna keep trying. It is uh, Tuesday, Tuesday morning, and we are back to Glasson. We found the three bachelor bucks again last night, Glasson, uh, still in the same area. So we had a bad wind last night, um, couldn't do anything with them, found them kind of late. Tried and got, uh, just couldn't, we got about halfway there and we lost light, so. Back at it first thing this morning, found them right away. They're in the same spot, same hillside. Uh, we're on the next opposite side of the canyon, class and clear across watching them. So I think right now we're gonna wait and see what they do, put them to bed uh, and see if we can devise a plan to go stock them. The wind is not optimal and depending on where they bed, there's some really thick stuff over there. So. If I think I can figure out where they're traveling to 
and I think I can get over there and cut them off and do an ambush before they go to bed. I might try that, but uh, try and try and be patient and see what we can't figure out. It is Wednesday, uh, so I've got the rest of the day today and tomorrow to get this done. Last night we got set up on uh, my target buck. We got about, you know, we were guessing 70, 80 yards from him where he was bedded, just over a rise. And uh, we were just hoping like every other night he would feed, he would get up and feed right over the rise right to us and it would be a, a chip shot and be a, a done deal. But, but as typical, uh, some internal instinct they got he got up out of his bed and took the high side and circled around above us probably uh 100 yards just out of bow range um no idea why just dumb luck uh on his part bad luck on my part so chalk it up for what it is but uh we watched them after that knew where they were so we came back in here this morning uh picked him up right at first light uh, I kind of I tried to put a move on them. Uh, it was kind of a long shot, hoping that they would skirt this sage right down below me uh, to this bedding area right below me, um, and I'd have about a 40, 50 yard shot. But I knew it was a long shot. Uh, didn't work out. Instead, I don't know if you can see the aspens on the far side of this gully, but they they walked the aspen edge down and then dropped down in the aspens and bedded down. So. They're a couple hundred yards from me right now. Um, bedded down. Uh, sun's up. It's hot. So I'm going to sneak out of here. I've got a game plan for tonight. Um, basically going to sneak into the same spot, but cut, cut about 150 yards down to that aspen line. About, I'm going to pull about 50 yards off the aspens. I'll be about 100, 100, probably 100, 125 yards above them. Uh, so again... They should get up out of their beds, walk that aspen line either back up the way they came, right right in my lap, or they may cut this goalie and, and cut the corner. Either way, I should get a shot. Uh, the only way it doesn't work is if they stay deep in the aspens all the way to the top, or if they come out super low. Um, it's a gamble either way, but uh, it's the only shot I got. There's there's no way to sneak these guys where they're at. It's just, it's too thick. It's, it's, it's going to say it's too thick and it's too open, which is a contradiction, but... It's, it's too thick, waist high. Um, it's loud, crunchy. It's hard to walk through, but at the same time, it's open aspens, so the upper part of my body would be completely exposed, and it'd, it'd just be a tough sell. So not even going to try it. Um, we're going to wait them out, be patient. Uh, I'm going to run to the archery shop in uh, Vail today, get the, get the triax fixed. Uh, <laughs> I've been doing a bad job of videoing, um, just being focused on trying to kill these bucks. But uh, last night, we knew where the bucks were bedded. Um, we were getting ready to take off and put a move on them. And uh, I grabbed my bow and got all ready. And right before we left, I wanted to shoot a few arrows. So I set the target up and I came back to full draw. And the bowstring came off the top pulley and the bow collapsed. And I had a big paperweight. Very, very unfortunate. Um, so, luckily I brought a backup bow, so I uh, grabbed the uh, Expedition SS, uh, which I probably should be shooting anyway, because I shoot it so great. I shot it all last year, um, brings me good luck and everything, so it's actually what I have with me this morning. Um, and I may stick with it the rest of the hunt, I don't know. But uh, either way, I'd still like the tracks fixed, so we're going to take the bow shop, see if there's any damage, get the cables put back on, uh, run some arrows through it, make sure nothing's messed up, and... Uh, We'll figure it out from there, but uh, Colorado, high, high country mule deer hunting, uh, it's, it's not easy. You know, for a non-resident to pick a spot on a map, come here, come here with uh, six days of hunting to scout and hunt, 
on public land, find the deer, uh, get in position and uh, get it done is quite the challenge. Uh, so hopefully we get it done. Um, I'll feel very accomplished with anything I get shot at this point. So stay tuned. Okay. Oh. So they were, they ended up being exactly where I thought they were. Where I was trying to tell you that hill comes down and then there's this big patch of that dead brown stuff. I was right here. They were right in between. Did you see me set the decoy up and sneak up into the shadows above it? Mm -hmm. I literally had my arrow knocked. I had my hand in my pocket pulling out rocks that I collected further down the hill. <clears throat> 30 more seconds. I don't know if they... I don't think they could have heard me. That was pretty quiet and the wind was just howling, making all of its own noise. May have saw me. One of them may have got like, you know, through the stuff. I, I don't know. But uh, I didn't feel the wind switch. I don't know, it was weird. But I just reached my pocket, I was just 30 seconds out of chuck the rock in the middle of that stuff, and they probably would all stood up right in shooting range. But I was reaching my pocket, and I just saw movement. So I took my release and pulled back, and <clears throat> he stopped in a, in a clearing. It would have been a brushy shot. There were limbs and stuff in the way, but I ranged it to 25 yards. And then he took off, and I held it. Second one ran through the gap. Third one, which was the, the big one, the wide one, he came and stopped in the gap, and I held it right at 25 yards right on him. And I, I couldn't force myself to shoot. I couldn't, it was too brushy. I didn't figure I'd, I'd, I don't know, just wasn't a good shot. So he ran out. <clears throat> I took, I don't know, I, I kind of get got five yards to my left and got him at full draw again in the wide open. It, I tried ranging him at 60, 70. Uh, but he never, I couldn't get him to stop. He was just kind of trotting and he looked back a couple times wagging his tail. So I don't think the big one had a clue what was going on. I think he was just following the others. But uh, yeah, it worked out. If, if I would have known, if I could have got eyes on him, it had been, it had been over. So the way it goes, it's not impossible on a blind sneak like that, but it almost worked out. So we'll give him all afternoon to bed down again and calm down and forget what just happened. and. They're just above camp here now, so try it again tonight. I don't know what else to do. It's close. yards from our target buck. <clears throat> Last night he came out of the same ditch and fed right through here. So we're just going to wait him out. The sun's almost down over the other side of the mountain. So I think once it's over the side completely, it'll cool off a little bit. Then maybe get to move and feed this way. Thursday, we uh, we set up on those bucks last night and never saw them come out, so we weren't sure what to do. So we went to our glassing spot this morning and uh, picked them up pretty quick again, same hillside, same area that they've always been every morning. So I uh, hustled down the mountain through the basin and climbed up as fast as I could, and I got within, I think probably 50, 60 yards of the group, and uh, I think they just caught my wind. I was I was just trying to crest the hill to uh, get behind them to have a good wind, and uh, they kind of, they beat me down the hill uh, faster than I could get up the hill. So I think they got my wind a little bit, and the two smaller bucks they didn't spook real bad, but they, they kind of side-hilled it out of there. Um, and I watched them, watched them head out, but the, the target buck, the big wide one, <clears throat> he, uh, he never came out, we never saw him, so I got a game plan together and uh, had some snacks, let everything calm down. 
I went a couple hundred more yards up the hill, and I was going to walk a, uh, a line of aspens uh, back to camp, and I, I figured that's where they went. And I figured if I, if I bumped them again, I, at least I could bump them down to the drainage that's right behind camp, which is kind of where I'd like them to be for tonight. Uh, puts them in a good spot for me to, uh, to stalk them or do something with them. So <clears throat> that being said, I got about 100 yards to where I wanted to go, and I caught a glimpse of antler, and uh, it turned out to be the target buck. He didn't take off with the other two. He was still sticking around. So I watched him for a little bit, and he, he I, I thought he bedded down. I wasn't sure if he just got behind a bunch of brush and was heading downhill or if he bedded down. So I put about a 45-minute, 100-yard sneak on him, and I got within 15 yards, and I didn't even know it. He was hunkered down in a, a little hole in the thickest brush there is here, a bunch of oak brush. He busted out of there, and I watched him go clear down the mountain into a little patch of dead oak brush that we tried to uh, put a stock on him on the other day. Uh, since then, I've walked that little patch out, so I'm familiar with it. I know how the ground lays. He's bedded in there now, so I'm going to head back to camp, uh, regroup, get something to eat, get something to drink. Uh, it's been uh, it's been lake day here today. I'm spent. I uh, came shooting up this mountain this morning to try and cut him off. Probably, probably close to a thousand feet up. I came. Well, maybe not. It's probably 1,200 to the top, and I'm three quarters of the way. So I don't know, 800 feet up as fast as I could go to catch him. And uh, I believe we're we're just under 10,000 feet in elevation, so not much air at least that I'm used to. So anyway, take a breather. We'll uh, do some little more glassing from across the way, see if we can't spot him in his bed maybe. Um, Zach is actually across the, across the basin on the, other, on the other side of the canyon glassing and trying to video. I don't know. I don't know how much he got or if he got any of it, but I'll, uh, I'm interested to see when I get back to camp. So that's it. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it happens tonight. I got, uh, I got tonight and tomorrow morning, and then uh, after tomorrow morning, we're going to pack up camp and head south to uh, sheep country. So here we go. Literally right where you said he'd be. <clears throat> I got within between 15 and 20 yards. I ranged that yellow bush at 15 or at 20, and he was just quartering to me down. There's just a the yellow bush was here. There was like a ditch that ran right here. He was tucked down in just a little, a little low spot with bushes all around him. I'm sure if I would have focused, I mean, I glassed it four or five times, but I should have been able to see his antlers unless they just blend in with everything else, you know, but every rock, I, every rock I pitched would have hit 20 yards down the hill from him, just surrounding him. I don't know why he didn't get up. That would have been, it'd have been over if we would have got up from one of those rocks. That's why when you threw your arms up, I'm like, he's got to be there. I know he's there. Some of those rocks hit perfect. I mean, crack, 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 crack. Nothing. Hmm. I threw a dozen of them. Oh, I saw you up there heaving. That's <laughs> like baseball practice. He got up and he was, uh, and he was up and out. I didn't get a good look at him. Just. That's it. I like where he's at now, though. If that's if he's bedded up in there. I think he is. And he's by himself. Yep. Which that could be good or bad. Less eyes, I think. It's less, it's less eyes for sure. But I don't know how he's going to react being by himself. He might get up, and I feel like he's not going to mess around. He's going to be up trying to find the other two, like on the move. He's not going to be loafing and eating and stuff, you know. Might be good for the decoy. Yeah, if he tries to skirt us or something. Roger. I don't know. I'm confused. Uh, I don't know where he's going to want to go. That's the thing. It's, uh, I'm kind of iffy on it. It's like... I don't know Is either. he going to just go out to feeding, or is he going to... I think he's going to want to go up. But this way or that way, I have no idea. We're going to be straight above him. My gut, My gut tells me, and it's just because I've seen him do it before... I think he'll straight up out of that stuff to the top. 
which he may be in bow range if he's not in too much, in too thick, if it's open, I think he can kill him there, but then I think he'll angle off the tip of that, that grassy, that yellow grass, and head back up, well, I say that, that'd be back up to where I jumped him, back up to the triangle, the aspen triangle up in there, or he does just the opposite and angles up this way, thinking those other bucks are up there, but either way, it's fair, if we can get to those aspens and he comes up at all and angles in any direction, I, I should have him. If he comes out in the very bottom and goes either way, then we're just going to have to watch him. I don't know. But we'll have the high side, we'll have the wind, and we'll have three of his directions covered. So. What do you think? So we're just getting what's important situated here, my treats. In your satchel. Yeah, it's all your answers and crunch bars. What? You've been holding on with crunch bars this whole time. We got uh, tuna packets, some beef jerky, cosmic brownie, some oatmeal, and granola bars. So with, again, five hours of daylight left in my mule deer hunt, we finally guessed right in the game of cat and mouse. We, uh, we had him bedded in a, in a spot we were familiar with. I got in above him. He got up, he got up early. He actually, he, he, he did exactly what he was supposed to do. The only downfall was I was sitting on my butt and there was a little, a tiniest little lip and he was going by at 40 yards below it and I couldn't see him. And uh, I just happened to catch a glimpse of velvet antler tips. So I, I got on my knees and they were right there, 40 yards. And uh, I, I don't know if they saw me get on my knees or what, but they, they, they turned and started heading down the mountain. So I, I grabbed my bow, got stood up and <laughs> cranked my pin, floating pin all the way down, which is bottomed out at 70. And I had some trees marked all the way from 40, 50, 60, 70. And uh, I was scanning, looking for the big one, the target buck, and I couldn't, I couldn't find him anywhere. All I could see was the buck we call the whitetail and the deep fork buck. And the buck we call the whitetail was in, in the back and he was just going by the, the 70 yard tree. I came back to full draw and he was quartering away severely. <clears throat> I put it right on his back haunch and uh, I, on his back haunch, but I, I raised just above his back because he was getting out there at, 75 80 and uh, I, I squeezed it off and I hit him within two inches of where I wanted to and I think the arrow went clear up Fletchings and Luminoc disappeared in him clear up hit the opposite shoulder he came tearing down the hill uh, Zach was getting it filmed from straight across the canyon clear across so hopefully that footage is good but uh, he went down here to the bottom uh, and I watched him kind of stand there I could just see his head in his rack above the above the sagebrush for I don't know a few minutes and then uh 
he, I, th I thought he bedded down. Uh, he just, he, he went a lot lower. And then next thing I know, he fell over, you know, I don't know. So, uh, Zach finally made it over here. We got uh, 45 minutes, maybe an hour left of light. So we're gonna get down here and see if we can get our hands on him. Fingers crossed that uh, nothing crazy happens like it so often does, but uh, I'm excited. Be my first uh, legit mule deer. Uh, I've shot a couple does and a, and a tiny little fork before, but uh, nothing wall worthy. Um, so hopefully we're eating mule deer steaks tonight and uh, caping and boning him out. So we'll go see. The uh, expedition did the trick. The backup bow is no longer the backup bow. The Matthews is taking a back seat. When I was at that sage, where did I shoot? Where did I shoot him at? Should have been right down here. I think it was at an angle. Maybe those bushes. Was it these or? The Him or a rock. See my Luminoc. Congratulations, buddy. Yes. Why did you touch the velvet? Been waiting for this. Oh. Oh. <sighs> Three blade muzzy. Perfect velvet. Oh. We watched him for so long. Oh man, he's cool. The white tail. Go figure. I don't know what to do. Can you come down here? Yeah. Take a couple more, then we'll re rearrange him. Take one more. All right. Male. Still August, right? August 30th, I believe. August 30th.
August. Thirty. There it is. In Colorado. Cheapskates. I get to run some string through him. That's sharp. This will have to keep out deer, isn't it? He is officially mine. All right. All right. It is Friday, the 31st, and we are pulling out of Mule Deer Camp. We uh, got it done last night. We shot the second biggest buck we saw all week not the biggest buck in Colorado by any stretch but we looked under every stone behind every bush under every piece of sage I think and only turned up three decent bucks in uh, seven eight days and we killed the second biggest one uh, there was a there was a bigger frame buck a wider one that I would like to have shot he was kind of my target but uh, he gave us the slip time and time again I got within 15 yards of him yesterday morning. I think I got within about 30 yards of him the day before. So I had his number. Um, another day or two, we probably could have killed him. But uh, like I said, we were down to the final hours. Uh, the bigger one gave me the slip. I had an opportunity at the one we called the whitetail, uh, which we figured he's about the middle, the middle size buck, and uh, we got it done. So we had deer steaks last night. We got all packed up this morning and we are headed to the Spanish Peaks for a sheep hunt. So stay tuned.